The future of Wi-Fi networking, today on Live Now. Hello and welcome to Live Now, the info show for technology and trends. This week we are live at the WLPC Wireless LAN Professionals Conference, and I'm lucky enough to have today David Coleman from Aerohive Networks uh, joining me. David, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Ben. David, uh, you are the senior, senior, I don't know if that means you're old, well, senior I tech evangelist. <laughs> at uh, Aerohive. What does that mean? Senior tech evangelist, what exactly do you do? Okay, well, first of all, I am old. You are old. I, I am old, uh, but a senior technical evangelist is, uh, my responsibility is a lot of things. Um, I'm mainly to do exactly what the title kind of implies. I preach about our technology a lot. So I go to a lot of uh, customer events, uh, channel partner events, uh, get in front of customers. Uh, travel all over the world and try to talk uh, about Aerohive's technology, both from a vendor neutral perspective and also about uh, cool things that Aerohive is doing um, kind of just ourselves and uh, specifically. And um, I, I'm very lucky because I get to meet a, a lot of people that are a lot smarter than me. I meet interesting people. And I also interface with a lot of different departments within Aerohive. So I interface quite a bit with the sales team as well as the product management team and the training team. There are definitely a lot of smart people here at the conference. Again, this is the Wireless LAN Professionals Conference going on right now in Phoenix, Arizona. And a lot of the things discussed here about the existing state of Wi-Fi and also the future of Wi-Fi and things that we can expect uh, coming down the pipe. Now, I've heard a lot about uh, 802.11ax, I believe it is, which is similar to or is a similar, same name as Wi-Fi 6. Is that like the consumer name? Well, tell me a bit about where Wi-Fi is going with this new initiative. Sure, so the technical uh, name is 802.11ax, and probably though for the average consumer, they're gonna hear it referred to more as Wi-Fi 6, which is kind of like you said, the consumer and name is that, or the marketing name. Is that like the cell phoneization of this? You know how the cell phones, they had 3G and then yes. 4G and what have you, and, and but, Wi-Fi has always had this 802.11, you know, uh, G, and then 802.11 N, and then all these different ones, and and they had phase one and phase two, and all these things. Is this a way to maybe simplify that for the common folk like myself? Yes, absolutely. So the Wi-Fi Alliance, which actually is kind of the uh, uh, handles a lot of the marketing and the brand of Wi-Fi technology, uh, actually decided this uh, about a, within the last six months, kind of do something just like you said, because the average Joe. They don't know 802.11ax from 802.11n. Um, well, Wi-Fi geeks that are here at this conference absolutely know what a lot of that terminology means. Uh, so to make it kind of under um, easier to understand for the average person, to understand that there's generations of Wi-Fi. And the next generation of Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi 6. The technical term, though, is 802.11ax. So let's talk a little, a little bit about that technology. Uh, maybe from both a consumer point of view and also from an enterprise point of view, if you can break that down, what are the major advancements people will see with Wi-Fi 6? Uh, the major advancements is Wi-Fi is going to get more efficient. Uh, there's been an emphasis over the last 20 years to always uh, go for speeds, faster and faster and faster, and all, even a lot of the marketing has been about faster speeds. but. Um, radio frequency is half duplex, and because it's the half duplex nature of the medium, um, sometimes speeds are overrated actually, because at any given time only one radio can transmit. So to put it in layman's terms, if I'm talking to you on a walkie-talkie, can you talk to a walkie-talkie back to me no, and press the button? No, only one of you can push the button Exactly. At the same time. Well, Wi-Fi works the same way. Right. So uh, if a lot of people are communicating at the same time, they're actually taking turns. And that can be with 10 or 20 or more you know, devices connected to a single access point. That is absolutely correct. Now, you don't see that because it's happening in microseconds, but because of that, it's at the half duplex nature of the medium, uh, speeds are overrated. So there needs to be ways to make it more efficient. And that's what 802.11ax and Wi-Fi 6 is all about. It's all about high efficiency. It, it kind of reminds me of where uh, computer and Intel uh, processors have gone maybe over the last little while. You know, up into the uh, 90s and 2000s, it was all about speed. 
And every year or two, you know, you'd get a double the speed computer, double the speed, double the speed. But in the last few iterations of Intel's processors, it's been more, as you say, about efficiency, about getting the power requirements down, about giving you a, a laptop that, you know, can run for, you know, a full day without having to be charged. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is that sort of efficiency necessary with 802.11? Um, well, I, you know, that's an interesting analogy. Um, and I think it, that, that works. Um, it's uh, more about that uh, the efficiency of the frequency space. Right. So right now, um, most of the channel sizes for Wi-Fi are about 20 megahertz in size. And every time a radio transmits, it has to use the whole 20 megahertz channel. Where the main change with Wi-Fi 6 is going to be dividing up the channel into little baby channels that are actually the technical terms called resource units where an AP can communicate with up to nine client devices simultaneous. So for the, really for the first time, we're gonna get true multi-user capability for both downlink and uplink. And if think of it this way, if an AP can communicate with nine devices at the same time for either downlink or uplink, before it was always you, 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 you. Now it could be you. So just think about the time saving that I just showed you with the by pointing my fingers, um, you're going to be saving time. So it's all about uh, saving on airtime. And a lot about problem with Wi-Fi is trying to cut down on airtime consumption. If we can have true multi-user communications, there'll be less airtime consumption, less, um, and then everybody's going to be happier. Um, uh, another analogy you could use uh, could be just like standing in line at like Disney World. You know, I mean, wouldn't it be if wouldn't it be nice if nine people could all go through nine separate queues at the same time? But right now, everybody's going through one queue. So, um, as a father of three, I can uh, there you go definitely relate to that issue. Let me ask you. Um, are there any new provisions for security or ease of onboarding in Wi-Fi 6, or was that not a... a, a uh, not really ease of thing? onboarding, but um, and not security per se, but I will say this, uh, there is a, a new certification for security from the Wi-Fi Alliance called WPA3 um, that has enhancements mainly to PSK security. It's being replaced with something called secure authentication of equals. Uh, that will prevent uh, brute force offline dictionary attacks and actually make uh, a lot of home Wi-Fi more secure. Long story short, to circle back to your original question, is that when the Wi-Fi 6 certification for 802.11ax goes into place, uh, I believe this August, um, it will also be a requirement that the radios be uh, WPA3 certified as well. So they're kind of tying them together. The technology of 802.11ax doesn't really define security, but there's security enhancements that on the side that are kind of being tied together for certifi certification requirements, meaning it'll be supported in all radius. So, so be honest with me, completely honest, as okay. I know you always are, David. Um, will Wi-Fi 6, 802.11ax, will that be sexy enough to convince people who aren't already on the path to upgrade to upgrade? Is it going to be one of these new versions where people say, ah, oh, I'll get to it when I get to it? Or is there enough there that someone who is currently fairly happy with their Wi-Fi setup is going to want to rip and replace or upgrade or whatever it takes to get the new Wi-Fi 6 certification? Well, you know, um, I've been in this industry 20 years, and this is the biggest paradigm shift I've seen um, in about 10, 11 years. Really? The last was uh, 802.11n. Um, when we went from what were called SISO radios to MIMO radios. Now we're going to um, from single user communications to multiple user uh, communications. And this technology is going to be the prevalent technology in my mind for the next uh, uh, really 10 years. So maybe a good time to upgrade because this is the one that's going to be around for a while. If, if, with you're, a, if you're an enterprise customer yeah. and you're due for a refresh, you should absolutely go with AX. Obviously. If you just yeah. bought you know, equipment last, last week um, or last year, no, I mean, you're, there's typically a three or four year cycle. Um, I mean, I remember when, when it went from G to N, right. even people that just put a G in were looking at N like this is a big, this could be a big improvement. Right. And it's very similar. I mean, it's because it's vastly different on how Wi-Fi has worked for the last 20 years. Um, I also say this, it's going to be client driven too. So it's, uh, Samsung, I believe, I can't really speak for them, but the rumor is, is they're going to be announcing uh, within the next week or so, um, their next versions of phones um, that are going to have AX clients in them. 
uh, ra uh, radios in them, and you will start seeing a string of uh, uh, 8 or to 11 AX clients start coming out over the next year. Once again, I can't speak for Apple or any of these companies, but right. you're going to see it happen. And if you look at the market projections um, from the chipset vendors who really drive this industry, like Broadcom and Qualcomm, uh, the numbers of AX radios that they expect to ship in client devices over the next uh, three to five years, it's in the tens of millions. So that in itself will force uh, both home users as well as uh, the enterprise to upgrade eventually. And is but, Samsung calling it AX or are they calling it Wi-Fi 6? Um, they'll probably call it Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 6. And that's what I would guess because it's targeted more towards That's the, the C-level. Yes. The C-level name for it is, is Wi-Fi 6. Right. So, so if you're it, looking to ask your boss about it, you know, use Wi-Fi 6. Right. So if you're at this conference with all these geeks like me, they don't like the term Wi-Fi 6 because they want to, uh, they're purists and they want to call it 802.11ax. Right. But, uh, um, once again, uh, my mom, she's 80 years old. She doesn't know 802.11ax, but she can probably understand Wi-Fi 6. <laughs> Let's talk about something a bit more fun. You are one of the smart guys here in the room. You're also a published author. Uh, tell me a bit about some of the books you have and where people can find them and what they can do for people. Oh, well, thanks. So here's the, uh, uh, the quick plug for the book. So yeah, I've uh, been authoring books about Wi-Fi, vendor neutral books about Wi-Fi, not necessarily Arrowhide books. Uh, for about 18 years. Uh, my publisher is Cybex. Um, I write study guides uh, for the uh, industry uh, to uh, learn about Wi-Fi technology. Uh, my biggest book, my co-author, his name is David Westcott. Him and I uh, is called the Certified Wireless Networking Administrator Study Guide. Sounds Really fun, it's right? It's going to be, it's going to be an, an acronym in <laughs> yeah. there somewhere, maybe. It's, it's, just look up CWNA Study Guide on Amazon and look for the Cybex book, and uh, you'll find uh, uh, the fifth edition. And uh, it sells about uh, uh, five to 8,000 copies a year, and my publisher says it's the biggest selling book in Wi-Fi uh, in the world. Wow. Um, and I have several other books. Um, and the other thing I've been doing at Arrowhive is um, – we write, um, I do a lot of writing for Arrowhive too. I uh, do a lot of writing of blogs and we've also written, uh, uh, we have, we do the dummies booklets uh, for marketing purposes. So recently at Arrowhive, we had a um, 802.11ax for dummies. That's probably something I should read. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you Didn't can have to answer that quite as quickly. As anybody can go to Arrowhive's website and find a link to download uh, 802.11ax for dummies or just do a search for that. You can get a free PDF copy of that. And David, where can people find you if they want to ask you some questions? Um, uh, reach out to me um, on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter address is at Mr. M-I-S-T-E-R Multipath. Uh, uh, Multipath is an RF. I know it's geeky, but it's at Mr. Multipath. Um, I hope one day to have as many followers as Kim Kardashian. So, you know, follow me. <laughs> I'm sure you're well on your way. <laughs> yeah, David, but... uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate uh, okay. you coming on the show. My pleasure, Ben. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And that's okay. all the time we have for today. But stay tuned for a lot more WLPC content coming soon. Leave it a like or subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Live Now.